We good? All right. Um, so today, we're going to talk about using co-spaces in terms of collaboration, sharing, and feedback. Um, because these are things that are important to our classrooms, right? Um, building in VR is great, and it actually builds on some soft skills and overcome some equity deficits and stuff like that. But how as a teacher do you manage that? What does that workflow look like? So we're going to look at some kind of tips and tricks and some hacks that we have right now to do that. Um, but first, a little bit about housekeeping, and some people have already done this. Um, the VR podcast and CoSpaces is giving away this Oculus Go. Um, if you don't know what Oculus Go is, it is a standalone VR unit. You do not need a phone. You do not need a phone. It is all in one. And, a uh, little known fact, in the fall, there will be Oculus Go support for CoSpaces. So you will have this unit ready to go, and you'll be able to use CoSpaces. Yes, it's very exciting. It's awesome. Um, because if you've gone and you tried to price out what it takes to buy the cell phone and the headset and stuff like that, you know that it's expensive, much more expensive than it needs to be. Because you don't need a cell phone, right? You don't need that. You need something that operates VR. And this does it beautifully, beautifully. So here's what you have to do. And in a few seconds, this is going to go away. But you can find all these on Twitter. So you can see all the directions on Twitter that you need to do. You can look up me or you can look up Virtual Reality Podcast and it has all these directions. It's really easy to do. But don't worry, at the end of this, anybody that wants to be qualified, we're going to make sure that you're qualified before I draw names. Cool? Cool. Okay. All right. So let's start. So when we think about collaboration, we think about groups in the same space operating on one machine. And I put in quotations old school because I don't want to make that seem like it's not important because it's still relevant today. And so when we think about co-spaces, they can share one machine to work together because the conversation that takes place in the building is probably the most important thing in collaboration. It's not necessarily that they're each working on each different little part. It's about how they interact with each other while they're doing it, right? So old school method is where we start with collaboration and it's totally acceptable and it's probably preferred in some cases. But when we utilize technology, you're gonna find in CoSpaces that you can actually build groups inside of CoSpaces as an assignment. So you can see here that uh, I'm building an assignment. I'm gonna pull up groups and you see that I'm dropping students in as a group. And what happens in this, they are working real time together. So they're sitting around a table, they're halfway around the world, they are operating in the same space in real time. You as a teacher also can hop into their space and operate with them at the same time in real time. So you can see right here, the teacher's watching them shrink and make the person go bigger or larger. And this is a feature that's built into co spaces already. And then the last little component is a global perspective. Um, how many of y'all have done things like um, mystery Skypes or uh, global classroom initiatives? Have y'all done or heard of that before? Right, okay. So this is something that we're gonna start seeing more of like co-spaces where they have this group collaboration, you're going to be able to have a student that's in Ghana that has access to this technology operate with somebody that's in Kansas City at the same time. And that's really powerful. It actually helped develop empathy and an awareness of other cultures. And we take for granted as adults that we have this mobility, right? We can travel almost anywhere we want to go. But children really don't have that mobility. They do not. Especially when we look at lower income brackets, they are very stuck in a very small geographic location. So them getting to interact with others is important. Them getting to interact at this level is really awesome. So CoSpaces is a web-based technology primarily. There are apps on the iPad and stuff like that. But what this means for us is that it, it's in the cloud and it has links so these links that you can use as a teacher you can grab it and you can utilize tools like your learning management system or if you use Seesaw as a portfolio tool you can drop that in you can record they can record over the top of it what they built explain it to you and then we'll see when it's uh, when it populates what it looks like if I would spell it correctly I think I get that right. So the iGo is now uploaded. Have y'all used Seesaw before in your classrooms or have you seen it? Okay. So 
the standards for portfolio work that we're seeing from young children all the way up to high school, because that's becoming a big thing for colleges, your portfolio work. URLs or links, like website links, is one of the standard formats, the other being PDF and the other being image files. So this is a way that they can share their work out. And not only that, if they have access to this, they can continually build on that for years and years to come. So you have them do a project in post spaces, okay, great. They can go back, they can reference that much later, edit that six years down the road before they even let colleges look at their portfolio. It's real awesome and powerful. And there's also these other options. You saw that link dropped into, uh, into Seesaw, but since it is a, uh, a tool that you can use natively on the iPad, have y'all done that before with screen recording? You can actually record it, they can play their game, they can explain to you what they did, and that becomes a video file. But also on other option, uh, other platforms, like on the MacBook, you can use QuickTime. On an Android device, AZ Screen Recorder is the best. And then Screencastify is what you use um, on the, all the other platforms. So you can kind of capture that and share that out as a video file. And this is the one that I love the most. Uh, how many know, of y'all know about embedding? Okay, oh great, perfect. So you can embed co-spaces inside of a website or anywhere else. You can embed it in your learning management system. And you're gonna see here in a second when I publish. It is now loading on the web page, and not just loading, it's completely interactive on the web page. So watch all click play. And I'm moving this out of the space, embedded right on that web page. So if you have kids that create a website and they want to put there in a particular order and then they want to add like text next to it or they want to add it to a blog post or anything like that, you can do that. And that's really awesome to do. All right, so for feedback, you know, and I go back to the old schools in quotation marks because this informal method of, of, assess, of assessment is really important. You want to interact with your students. So I don't want to discount that. It is very important that you are interacting with them in that manner. But there are some other options, such as using some tools that are built into CoSpaces to kind of hack your way around. Um, did y have y'all looked at CoSpaces in the speech bubbles and the think bubbles yet? So you can add that to any object. So you see on the stairs, I put a speech bubble and I called it teacher notes and I left a note. Because remember, in the group work, you can drop in and you can see what the group's doing. Individual assignments are the same way. You can drop in, you can see what the student's doing. You can tag it with the speech bubble or a think bubble, put your notes in it, and they can go in and edit and when they complete whatever you said for them to do, they can just delete that and they can move on. And that's available on any object. Any object that you put in CoSpaces, you can add that speech. But there's another method if you get into things like the actual coding aspect, the text-based coding. Um, and is there anybody here that does any type of online coding? A couple? Okay. So inside of CoSpaces on a laptop or on the desktop, you have the option of text-based code. And you can see this, y'all see this different color here? It's green. This right here signifies that this code is not recognized to do anything. It's just a note. It's called a, a code comment. So you do this forward slash, forward slash, and I put movements, because I just notified that, oh, uh, this is gonna be my movement from everything down. So it's just a note for people that are looking at the code. There it is. But you can leave other notes too. You can say, hey, I noticed that you built this in this way. Maybe you need to try this method. But they also have another that's even more advanced. And you can see it as I'm typing all these notes. We'll get to it here in a second. It's called collapsible code. And so the first one is slash slash. This one is slash star star or asterisk asterisk. And it allows you to leave as many comments as you want. You can leave a whole page if you want. And you can collapse it down and they can as well. So that's another way you can kind of hack your way into leaving notes for your students. And you can do that remotely. You don't have to be there with them. So in the evening when you want to assess what they're doing, you want to leave them with some feedback, you can do this as well. Okay. All right. So those are the only things that I have to share with you today. 
but I'm willing to take some questions about that. And I'm also going to share this out on my Twitter, this whole presentation, so you can see exactly everything that I just did. And you can also see, um, or get touch base with me to see how we operate, uh, or how to operate this. This is my Twitter handle, at James McCurry. So you can actually, if you just uh, tweet to me, I'll make sure that I get it up, because I'll forget to post it up, <laughs> unless you actually hit me on that. So are there any questions about those three areas that we touched on? No? No? Okay. Oh, um, got all these notifications. All right, so. All right, so we have a few minutes. Is there anybody that needs help qualifying for this? All right, so let's go here. Anything, leave us a message. Yeah. Just make it appropriate. No inappropriate messages. And steps one, two, and four are pretty, pretty simple, especially after we just did this presentation. You can leave on step four if you want to talk about how this collaboration sharing and feedback, how it operates with code spaces. You can do that. Just make sure you use these two hashtags. And notice that the hashtag is hashtag VR podcast, not the, 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 the VR podcast. And that's because we have a lot of people that share that hashtag with us. And is there anyone that needs help with Anchor? Okay? Um, have you downloaded it yet on your phone? Yeah. Yeah, you need the app to leave a message. Yeah. It does, and that's fine. We can wait it out. It'll take it'll take probably about five minutes or so to download the app. Yeah, okay. But we'll make sure that we get your call. Alright, and any other questions? Or anything? Okay. Alright, well I'm gonna put down the mic. Thank you.